Good morning. <clears throat> I see three of you on here, which means at least three people aren't mad at me for my self-imposed hiatus yesterday. <sighs> it's good to be back in the office, that's for sure. So I hope you all were able to get a little rest yesterday and perhaps some rest through the week. That's sort of my plan is to say a very wise person once told me make sure you grab a mental health day every once in a while so that's that's where I'm at reaching back for some mental health oh. looks like our cleaning guys have come in this morning so see Angela Mary Beth good to see you this morning oh we're up to seven all right now I don't feel so bad uh, we'll go ahead and get started and oh Marianne good morning Marianne and so so good morning again and uh, welcome back I was just saying thank you for giving me an opportunity to to be away yesterday um, and I'll explain here in a second why that was why that sort of became necessary um, but if you're following along, um, we're back on commonprayer.net, um, and so the website should be lining up with where we're at in the book, uh, we're, and we're just jumping over to April the 14th, and so we'll be on page 238. So if you want to turn there, you're free to do so. And I wanted, um, as I was looking, I was prepping for this morning and going over, I was like, oh wow, we're going to jump a whole bunch of pages in Exodus, and we're going to jump, because we had done... We'd done the gospel readings for Holy Week, and then we had jumped there for a little while to First John, read a little bit of that, and now we're going to jump back and go to First Thessalonians. Um, you know, and and you know, and one of the questions that might come up is, well, why don't we just go back and catch the readings? Like, why don't we just, eh, you know, what we'll forget everything else. Let's just go back and keep reading through the Book of Exodus. And there may be very good reasons to do that, and maybe in a different world I might do that. But um, but the thing that occurs to me, and we've been talking about this a lot, is the idea that we pray best in community. And so we've experienced that as a group here, um, but it's worthwhile to remember that we are also a part of larger communities than just ourselves. Um, that there are groups who are waking up all over the place to pray um, here at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, there are people all over the world who are, who are um, going to pray through common prayer, and we are a part of those groups. Um, and so, I think there is some virtue in just saying, you know, whatever whatever our individual needs are, we're going to continue to be a part of the larger community, and so, and that just opens our eyes to the fact that, you know, even even as we pray as a church, we are still part of something larger than ourselves, and I think that's a really important thing in our world, which is so hyper individualized, and so to just say, well, wherever the community is, this larger community in which we pray today, we're going to be in Exodus twenty five. That's where we're going to hang out. Um, and I would also say it's an opportunity for personal prayer. Um, we pray in this circle together, but um, but go ahead, go back, read through Exodus, read through the chapters. Um, if you wanted to finish up First John, if something grabbed you and you want to see what else John has to say, then go back and grab that. That's fine. Um, and then I and then also just wanted to address this is as we have this huge shift. We shift from Holy Week now to the season of Easter. Um, it's one of the opportunities we have to sort of say. And to discover that we often read these passages. We, we look at our prayers, we look at our lives, we look at um, scripture, the tradition of the churches. We use different lenses all the time to do that. Um, I mean, shoot, like, just think about the way that we would think about a meal. If we're, if we're having a really awful day, then a bowl of golden grain, we're like, oh, this is all I've got, though. this is all I've got. All right, but if we're having a really great day, we're like, oh shoot, I got I got golden grams in the in the closet. Sort of where we're at shapes how we read things and how we interpret things. And so as we're walking through Holy Week, we're reading everything through kind of a crucifixion lens, and that's a really important lens to read with. But now that we're into Easter, we're invited to read things through more of a of a resurrection lens. Um, and both those things, as we read the same passage through different lenses, can reveal new meanings and new ways of that passage speaking to us. So I want you to be aware of that today, that as we enter into this Easter season, to read these passages through the lens of resurrection. I don't know what that'll mean for you, um, but be open that God speaks in some different ways. And so with that, um, I'm going to quit my rambling on. I guess I had to get two in since we weren't here yesterday. Um, 
Oh, one other thing I do want to do, uh, my apologies, um, just to update on the prayer list so that I don't surprise anybody when we when we get there. Um, first and foremost, uh, Kara Ober, who we've been praying with with some symptoms of the uh, of the coronavirus. Um, it turns out she does have the coronavirus. So it, was a, it took the better part of two weeks for that test to come back. And so we'll continue to pray for Kara. Um, and then on a personal note, we've been praying for Regina Richardson, um, who is Jenny's grandmother, um, Jean Lippy's mother. Um, she is in Hanover Hospital and has taken a turn for the worse and is and is not well. Um, so I was go so part of the reason uh, part of the reason we didn't do prayer yesterday. I was going to actually record on Sunday night, and I ended up at the hospital with her, and then ended up there again yesterday during the afternoon. Um, and so, so the family has has some difficult decisions ahead of them, and so encourage you to be in prayer um, for Regina and for the entire family. And just on a personal note, I say thank you for, um, for supporting us as, uh, as we try to interpret this very difficult time in her life through the lens of the resurrection. And so friends, let's quiet our hearts as we prepare to pray. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. And our antiphon this day. May the guarding of God shelter us against the winds and the wiles of the devil. And our psalm for today is Psalm 71. We'll be praying verses 1 through 3 and then 15 through 17. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. My mouth shall recount your mighty acts and saving deeds all day long, though I cannot know the number of them. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God, I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. May the guarding of God shelter us against the winds and the wiles of the devil. Again, we're in Exodus chapter 25. And though we have skipped some interesting things, we jump right into a very interesting thing as we consider the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to take for me an offering. From all whose hearts prompt them to give, you shall receive the offering for me. This is the offering that you shall receive from them. Gold, silver, and bronze. Blue, purple, and crimson yarns and fine linen. Goat's hair. Tanned ram's skins. Fine leather. Acacia wood. Oil for the lamps. Spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. Onyx stones and gems to be set in the ephod and for the breastplate. And have them make me a sanctuary, so that I may dwell among them. In accordance with all that I show you concerning the pattern of the tabernacle and of all its furniture, so you shall make it. They shall make an ark of acacia wood. It shall be two and a half cubits, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. You shall overlay it with pure gold. Inside and outside you shall overlay it, and you shall make a molding of gold upon it all around. You shall cast four rings of gold for it and put them on its four feet, two rings on the one side of it and two rings on the other side. You shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. 
and ye shall put the poles into the rings on the side of the ark by which to carry the ark. The poles shall remain in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. You shall put into the ark of the covenant that I shall give you. Then you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be its length, and a cubit and a half its width. You shall make two cherubim of gold. You shall make them of hammered work at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at the one end and one cherub at the other. Of one piece with the mercy seat, you shall make the cherubim at its two ends. The cherubim shall spread out their wings above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings. They shall face one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be turned towards the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on the top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the covenant that I shall give you. There I will meet with you, and from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim that are on the ark of the covenant, I will deliver you all my commands for the Israelites. This is the word of the Lord. We turn over for our New Testament lesson from the book of 1 Thessalonians. We'll be reading from chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed. Nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our very selves, because you have become very dear to us. You remember our labor and toil, brothers and sisters. We worked night and day so that we would not burden any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how pure, upright, and blameless our conduct was toward you believers. As you know, we dealt with each one of you like a father with his children, urging and encouraging you and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. This is the word of the Lord. Friends, returning to our antiphon, we pray. May the guarding of God shelter us against the winds and the wiles of the devil. Our reflection for today comes from Martin Niemöller, who was a Lutheran pastor during the time of Nazi Germany. And he wrote these words, which are very famous. First they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for the communists, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for me. And then there was no one left to speak out for me. Friends, let us go before our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, in this Easter season, we remember the care and the comfort that you show to each and every one of your apostles as they come to realize the goodness of your resurrection. We remember the way you treated the women at the tomb and saying, why are you crying? Taking their grief seriously. We remember when you appeared to the apostles in the upper room and, and you were patient with them. Particularly, we remember Thomas who said, I'm not going to believe till I see it. 
and then you were gentle with him to show him. We remember the ways that you restored Peter by the Sea of Galilee when you said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, of course, Lord, you know that I love you. And so, God, we observe that resurrected life is gentle, patient, and kind. And Lord, we would stop and just say thank you for the, for the ways that this congregation, this wider community that gathers here, this larger community of Silver Run and even Carroll County, oh God, has been gentle and kind and patient with one another during this season of difficulty. We thank you for the ways that we've seen resurrected life springing up all around in some ways in which have been celebrated and other ways which are quiet and have gone unnoticed by all but you. And God, we pray that as we now enter this season where we proclaim the resurrection with great vigor, we ask, O oh God, that we would be more like the Apostle Paul who said that I gave myself over to you. We handed ourselves over to you and we treated you with kindness and gentleness, with patience and with love. Though we ask that this season of quarantine would not harden us, but rather would soften us to the goodness of our neighbors and the love that you show for each and every one of us. And so God, because our hearts are softened, because you invite us to care for one another, we lift up our prayers for our friends and family this day. Lord, we pray especially this morning for Kara Ober, who has now received a diagnosis of the coronavirus. And Lord, we, we actually say thank you for the clarity. We thank you that she was able to get a test and that now she knows where she stands. God, we pray that you would help her to receive care, that you would help her to find places to be quarantined and to keep herself and others safe. And we pray that you would keep her symptoms mild and that you would return her to health. We also pray a special prayer in this resurrection season for our sister Regina, who is, who is battling, who is battling a, a great deal to keep her life. And Lord, we pray that you would grant her peace and that you would come and that you would be a healing presence to her body, her soul, and her spirit. Pray also, God, that you would tend to her family, that you would give them peace of mind and clarity in the decisions that lie before them. Lord, we also raise up those for whom we pray this day, those whom we've been privileged to pray for for some time. We continue to pray for Caroline Will, for Jean Brothers, Billy Heath, Pam Wood, the Jay Hoffman family, for Axel, for Melinda Posey, for Aaron Bossom, for the family of Patsy Brown, for Betty Harmon, Dave Cunningham, the Chase family, the Adair family, and for Sherry Armstrong. We also ask, O oh God, that you would hear the prayers that we lift up to you in the quiet of our hearts this day. Father, in this Easter season, we are reminded that in your kingdom, death and sin do not have the last word, but life. And so as our friends experience, experience pain and experience trauma and experience the specter of death that is all around us, we pray, God, that we would see in them life and life more abundant. This we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And friends, let us pray in the words of our Savior, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go before us, God, that we may follow in your steps. Go behind us, God, to steer us when we stray. Go beside us, God, as our strength and our joy for the journey. Amen. 
And now, friends, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Friends, it is good to see each and every one of you back on here this morning. Um, be sure of my prayers for you this day as, uh, as we continue to live in the light of Easter resurrection. Um, and, uh, and again, if you have any prayer requests, um, we're going to continue doing this just as long as we can. And so if you have prayer requests, please go to stmarysucc.org um, and submit them so we know how to handle them pro properly. But please be sure that it is our privilege to be able to pray for you and for your families and for your loved ones during this time. Look forward to seeing you all in the morning. Take care. Peace and good, my friends.